Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will be covering meiosis, which comes under the genetic diversity topic. And this is from the A-level biology curriculum. So let's begin. So first, looking at a few important definitions that you need to be aware of in this topic. Okay, first starting with the homologous chromosome. So this is where we have a maternal um, and a paternal chromosome. So a chromosome from uh, the mother as well as the father. Uh, and these are similar size and they carry the same genes, but they, they might have different alleles. So some people are not too sure on how they look like. So it's important to know that both of these, so this and this, are both homologous chromosomes. Uh, because due to the, from the definition, uh, they contain a maternal and a paternal chromosome. Same for this, they have a maternal and a paternal chromosome. So the only difference is that this one has been replicated. So, uh, so what happens is when we uh, when we go through interphase, so what this this would just replicate, and and that's how we form uh, this homologous chromosome. So th this these are both homologous chromosome. Uh, don't get confused. So the second one has been replicated, so the chromosomes can be shared between the and the two there's two cells which will form uh, okay and as you can see th they both are of similar size and uh, they carry the same gene so if we're saying that the the uh, gene for hair color is uh, this then in the so if this was the maternal chromosome so then in the paternal chromosome and uh, the gene for hair color would also be there but this could have a different allele so for example and uh, this might be uh, this hair color might be brown, um, but this might be blonde. So this is what it what it means by different alleles. Um, and also the sister chromatids. So this is where we have two identical copies of the same chromosome, and it's attached by by a centromere. And for a sister chromatid uh, to occur, we must have the second, the replicated uh, homologous chromosome. Um, because we for this for the sister chromatid to uh, basically happen we require a centromere to first form uh, and for that centromere to first form we would require the chromosome to be replicated so it can't be the single um, chromosome it has to be the double ones okay so now looking at the uh, process of meiosis so th this basically produces four genetically different daughter cells uh, and it produces gametes for sexual reproduction, so the sperm and the egg cells. So these haploid cells are basically half of the diploid cells which we normally um, have in, for example, our normal body cells. Um, so looking at an example, so if we have uh, three um, in haploid, so three uh, chromosomes, then we would have um, double the amount of chromosomes in diploid so this would be six and um, so looking at examples of human uh, because humans have uh, 46 chromosomes um, then in haploid we would only have 23 chromosomes so that would be half of what we normally have and uh, what happens is these haploid gametes so these sperm and egg can fuse uh, to form a diploid uh, zygote. Um, so, because we have 23 from the sperm, 23 from the egg uh, joining together, and this would give us 46 chromosomes in total. Uh, and this is why it's important that we form um, these um, haploid cells, because if, for example, we had 46 in both of these cases, then, and that would f end up forming uh, 90 two um, chromosomes in the diploid and whereas the normal body cell only has 46 chromosomes and this could lead to a miscarriage or, or the infant dying uh, short after uh, their birth. All right so now looking at the process all right so now looking at the process of meiosis so in this we have two divisions so first division is occurring then the second one is occurring in this stage. Um, so the first meiotic division, um, the homologous chromosomes would separate. So 
uh, looking at this. So we can see that the blues are homologous chromosomes and the red are reds are also homologous chromosomes. So when we look what happens after the meiotic division, the first meiotic division, um, we end up getting blue and red together and, and blue and red together in the other one as well. So as you can see in there. Um, so we, we're not getting blue and blue and red and red together. So uh, this is so that we don't end up getting uh, both maternal chromosome in one and both uh, paternal chromosome in the other one. So it just makes sure that we have a maternal and a paternal chromosome um, because we want the genetic diversity from both the mother and the father. In the second meiotic division, we have chromatids separating. So uh, now remembering the chromatids um, are just part of one chromosome. So they're, they're just two sister chromatids joined together by a centromere. So for example, this, these are chromatids. So what happens is each of the chromatids uh, goes to the they don't they won't go to the same cell they will go to a different cell so for example um when we are looking at this so uh, the blue chromatid the we have two blue chromatids and two red chromatids so they are both going to different cells so it's not two blues in one or two reds in one they're going to different cells so we end up forming blue red blue red so looking at the stages of meiosis um, so it's the exact same of mitosis apart from um, because we have two divisions occurring and um, so everything just repeats again so after telophase one where mitosis would end after having two daughter cells uh, we have further um, so the prophase two metaphase two anaphase two telophase two would occur um, and but we don't have interphase two occurring and um, because we already have that genetic information we already have those chromosomes but to indicate the second meiotic division we just add and uh, the two next to each of the different stages so looking at the overall process so we start with uh, the interphase um, going through prophase metaphase anaphase and we end up forming um, two daughter cells at telophase um, and what happens now is those two daughter cells further uh, go through so they, they would um, go through second meiotic division to produce these haploid uh, daughter cells so we end up forming four daughter cells in total so this is the overall process of meiosis so you need to know how, how meiosis can result in genetic diversity so First looking at crossing over, so this occurs between homologous pairs of chromosomes and during prophase 1. So homologous pairs of chromosomes remember, remembering that it's maternal and the paternal chromosome. So we have, so this can be the maternal chromosome, this can be the paternal chromosome and these are aligned next to each other. So what happens is the homologous pair of chromosomes associate with each other uh, what this means is they twist around each other and a chiasmata forms. So looking at the diagram, so we have the the different homologous pairs of chromosomes. So we have the maternal and the uh, the paternal chromosomes. So they associated they have associated with each other. Um, they have twisted around each other as you can see, and the this overlap part this is called a chiasmata. Now what happens is the the fragments of chromatids break and rejoin on a different chromatid. So again if we look at the blue bit, so this bit, so this blue bit would uh, break off um, and this could rejoin on the red chromatid for example. Um, and what this means is the alleles are exchanged. So looking at the diagram so you can see uh, we have from the blue chromatid, so this fragment has uh, broken and is joined with the red, uh, the the red chromosome, and from the red, um, we have a fr fragment broken which is joined with the uh, blue chromosome, and this results in new combination of alleles, basically resulting in genetic diversity. So you need to be also aware of a random assortment of homologous pairs or it's also called the independent segregation. So in this what happens is so the maternal and the paternal 
chromosome from the homologous pairs um, separate in a random combination. Okay, so now looking at, at, uh, at a human cell, um, so in this case we only have three homologous chromosomes to simplify things, but remember in a human we would have 23. The maternal and paternal chromosomes would separate in random combination, um, for example in this. So they don't have to, all, all the maternals don't have to go in one, and the, all the paternals have go in one. Uh, it can be, it, it happens randomly basically. And uh, so for example, if, if blue was maternal, and then we can have a blue, um, and then that purple, uh, which would be paternal, and then blue again, going to one side. So th this is basically the anaphase stage. Um, and there's so many different combinations that they could separate into um, and just remember that we have 23 chromosomes in a human cell uh, when this 23 homologous chromosomes um, so th this uh, would lead to a very very high uh, diversity uh, as it would con create a, a huge variety of different alleles uh, leading to a different combination of alleles basically. But now we'll look into the chromosomal non-disjunction. So this is, so the chromosomal non-disjunction is basically a mutation in the number. So it's the number of chromosomes. Um, this occurs during anaphase. Um, and so what can happen is, for example, the homologous pairs of chromosomes may fail to separate during the meiosis bond state. So remember, um, in meiotic division, the first meiotic division, we separate the homologous pairs of chromosomes. In chromo chromosomal non-disjunction, non they can fail to separate. So for example, uh, this is what would happen normally. So we would have the, we formed four, uh, four of these chromosomes, we would separate into two. So the homologous chromosomes would separate and then this would then separate into sister chromatids in an ideal situation. But what can happen in um, chromosomal non-disjunction in um, homologous pairs of chromosomes, then they would fail to separate. As you can see, one has um, only one, um, one chromosome, whereas one has gained three. And in, in the next stage, we would only end up forming one uh, we would only give, end up giving one sister chromatid to each of um, the cell, whereas the other the other one would end up getting three uh, sister chromatids, chromatids, uh, and this could be fatal and lead to many disorders. Um, and we can also um, in in when the sister chromatids. Um, separate during the second meiotic division so they could also fail to separate and this could also lead to, lead to chromosomal non-disjunction um, so looking at this now so the first the first meiotic division has occurred absolutely normally but then um, the second one so we have one occurring normally but one of them has given uh, one only one chromatid to one of the cells and one has gained an extra chromatid gaining three and when one gamete has an extra chromosome chromosome we call it trisomy um, and it might have a missing chromosome which we call um, aneuploidy so you just need to be aware of this okay so we also have random fertilization of gametes so meiosis has produced uh, genetically dif different gametes and all of the processes above, um, so the crossing over occurring and the random assortment, and this has um, increased the genetic difference. Um, so what happens now is the fusion of these uh, haploid gametes, so the genetically different gametes, would result in a genetically different zygote. And it, it, the fertilization is random. Each of these sperm has an equal chance of fertilizing the egg. Um, and all of them, all of these sperms have a, a different gen genetic, um, they have different genetic information uh, due to meiosis and all of the factors we've talked about. So this it just increases uh, the genetic diversity. So we have over 1 million sperm trying to fertilize this egg and all of these have 
different genetic diversity, different genetic information. Okay, so you need to know the key differences between mitosis and meiosis. So I've just highlighted them in the table below. So mitosis has only one division, whereas my, my, meiosis has two. A mitosis forms diploid chromosomes. Um, so these would be 10 versus my, meiosis um, forms um, N, um, which is haploid. Um, for example, in hu human cells, and this would be 23 chromosomes, whereas mitosis would be 46. It's, it's double that amount. Uh, mitosis produces daughter cells, which are genetically identical, whereas in meiosis, they are genetically different. And uh, mitosis produces two daughter cells, whereas mitosis, meiosis produces four. And in my, mitosis, the homologous chromosomes do not pair up. Whereas in meiosis, the homologous chromosomes do pair up, uh, which can lead to the processes like crossing over. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did like this video, don't forget to subscribe to see more of these. And you can watch my recent videos by clicking on the links popping up. Thank you.